Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface to say that things come in threes. And that seems to be the case for Henry Cavill. A mixed bag, but mostly positive. First of all, of course, we know that he decided to leave The Witcher. His decision looked like he was contracted for three seasons with an option to continue. He didn't want to continue. And having seen the first two seasons of The Witcher, I can fully understand why. Bearing in mind this is a dream job for him. And the show just revolves around Yennefer and intersectional feminism and crap like that. Uh, secondly, uh, a rather unfortunate one, it seemed that he'd re-landed the role of Superman as he made an announcement that he was returning to the role of Superman and there would be films made forward and he was excited to share those details with us. However, yesterday, the sad news came that James Gunn has decided to go in a completely different direction and he will no longer be Superman. His cape has been hung up. His tenure is over for that role. Didn't have great scripts, but my God, he was Superman and it's just incredible shame that it never got to continue. However, while everyone was sad and, and, and you know, a little bit upset about things, uh, suddenly... Some interesting news drops again from Henry Cavill, just 24 hours removed from that Superman news, and here it is. For 30 years, I have dreamt of seeing a Warhammer universe in live action. Oh, baby, baby, baby! Now, after 22 years of experience in this industry, I finally feel that I have the skill set and the experience to guide a Warhammer cinematic universe into life. Partnering with Natalie Viscuso at Vertigo has been a blessing beyond words. Without her, we might not have found the perfect home at Amazon. We'll get to that in a moment. And having a home like Amazon will give us the freedom to be true to the massive scope of Warhammer. To all of the Warhammer fans out there, I promise to respect this IP that we love. I promise to bring you something familiar, and I endeavor to bring you something fantastic that is, as of yet, unseen. Our first steps are to find our filmmaker, creator, writer. Watch this space, my friends, for the Emperor! Ah, you get my heart there, uh, Henry. This is, uh, well, I think, I personally think this is exceptional news. The only little wobble in there is the Amazon bit. We all know about Amazon. We all know about Amazon's ESG as well. Um, however, you know, once in a blue moon, we do get good shows. We got Reacher, and Reacher, you know, was just a great show. Uh, unfortunately, we also get things like, 38 seconds of Wheel of Time. That's all I lasted. Uh, we also get <laughs> the Rangs of Power, which is just an abomination, an, an abhorrent abomination of chaos. Trying to fit in some Warhammer stuff, you know. Uh, of the Tolkien world that he created. Unbelievable stuff there. But if Henry does have the autonomy, if Henry does have the uh, ability to craft his own universe unhindered make his own decisions creatively then fingers crossed we could be onto something exceptionally good here i'm something of a warhammer fan myself you know uh as you know i've been playing dark tide religiously since it came out uh it's a phenomenal game that of course is the 40k universe the universe that Henry Cavill will be venturing into. And he himself isn't just a Warhammer fan, massive Custodes fan, clearly for the Emperor. I mean, as you may have seen from my side, I have done painting streams with Sargon of Akkad, Carl Benjamin, uh, Nick Ricada. Uh, we get our Warhammer figures out. We do some painting. We do some chit-chat. It's good. Henry, if you ever see this, you're, you're very welcome to join us to paint some figures with us. Uh, you know, big fans of this this um, this world, this universe that's been crafted, created. This crazy, bizarre, vile, violent, because 
in the future, there is only war. But Henry's not just bullshitting. Let's have a look at a couple of other things here. Here, let me move. Let me move myself or remove myself from this frame. We can see here, here's a, an Instagram post from April uh, where he's showing off one of the custodies that he's painted. I've gone through so many different test models and I've tried my hand at numerous different paints and techniques before finally feeling like I was heading in a direction that I've liked. It's not amazing by any means, and the camera hides a multitude of sins. Amen to that. Uh, I'm saying that from my own perspective, by the way, not Henry's. But this is a little work in progress of mine. I have a lot to improve upon. Watch this space for more. For those who care, it will be a one. It will 100% be uh, a drastite spear because rule of cool. Fair enough. Edit. Forgot to mention then I'm using Adrian Smith's artwork as the inspiration. So this is, this is a, a decent... I mean, this is better than I could do, for sure, uh, on the Warhammer painting front. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty awesome. I think he um, he does himself... Uh, and there you go. You get my heart again. And there's Carl Benjamin. There's uh, Sargon of a God. That's pretty damn good, man. Keep it up. Uh, can I pop back... I'm feeling... Uh, my narcissism needs me to go... Okay, I'm back. I'm back. And then here again, here's another video, and here's a video of uh, Henry going around the Warhammer Studios, and he's there with his coffee, and he's having a chit-chat, and he's picking up, and he's looking at some models, and rice and painting. Uh, I finally, finally made the pilgrimage to Warhammer World, and what a day I had. I don't often get giddy with excitement, but getting to meet the likes of Andy Smiley, Mark Chambers, Wade Price, and Aidan Daly... Uh, ha and being able to pick their brains about mini uh, minute and exclusive parts of the law while wandering the halls of the exhibition center was a dream come true. Some of you may not know what Warhammer is, and I urge you to take a look. If you live in the UK, definitely go to Warhammer World. The artistry involved and the synergy between miniature designs are so enormously diverse, uh, it's extraordinary. The brilliance of the artistry is rather wonderfully matched by the sense of community and also the passion that is shown by both the people who work there and the people who visit. I don't often feel at home, but I did that day. Look, the passion is absolutely dripping off the man here. You can tell that. You can feel that. This is somebody who absolutely adores this franchise. And I was on Drinker's stream last night, Open Bar. Thank you very much, Drinker. And we were talking about how franchises are being led by people that don't even like the franchise. They're being led by people that don't even like heroes, that superheroes in the case of, you know, some cases with Marvel and DC. And we're begging for people to come on board that have a respect and a love for the source material and have a respect and a love of the franchise that they want to create something beautiful. And when you go back to the past and you listen to creatives who worked on things like Star Trek and Star Wars and stuff like that, their passion absolutely shines through. And I was recently watching a stream with Graham Nolan and Chuck Dixon, two amazing legends of DC. And they were talking about, because it was Bane's 30, this Bane. There you go. That's the first appearance of Bane. They were talking about the birthday, the 30th anniversary of the creation of Bane, the release of Bane. And just listening to Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan talking about their process of how they uh, fleshed out the character and in Graham's case, how they designed the character uh, was absolutely astronomically fucking awesome because you could just tell the love and the passion and the excitement that they had to create this, char this character, this brand new character that was going to go on to break Batman's back and do something that's never been done in comic history before. And when I say never been done, I mean it from a legitimate perspective, not a, this is the first black woman in a movie. It's 2022. No, it's not. Uh, and all that kind of nonsense that we get today. I feel the same passion dripping from Henry Cavill. I feel the same love. I've seen this multiple times uh, when he's posted images, pictures of the Warhammer universe, when he talks about the Warhammer universe, 
in interviews where he talks about uh, geekdom and fandom in general in interviews. This is a man who is on our side. And when I say on our side, I mean the side of the people that have invested time, money, and energy to keep these franchises going because we have such a love and it's a, it's a two-way street. They give us the respect because we purchased the product and they give us something beautiful and wonderful and majestic to watch. Something which now seems to be an absolute age away. But as you can probably tell by the little bit of excitement by me, I legit think this is good news. The, the only little roadblock or the only little bump in the road that I can see so far is that it's Amazon. But if we can get over that hurdle, then I'm very excited. I really want to see a 40k universe live action. I really want to see somebody who's helming it, that loves it, that has a tremendous amount of respect for it. And in Henry's case, will also star in it as well. So fingers crossed, but this is great news. The bad news that we had yesterday seems to be usurped with some amazing news today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.